What's up, YouTube? Welcome back to Electrobrap. Today, we're here in LA. We're with the mad scientist, Mark, from MSC Engineering. He's the brains behind the Electrom. Not only that, he's the cameraman. Hi, Mark. <laughs> so, what we've been up to, we changed the plastics. They're blue now, as you can see. I love the color. I wish I could have bought it like this, but hey, nonetheless, it's blue now, and it'll soon become Galaxy, like all the other bikes on the channel. I'm really stoked for that. Another exciting thing that we did is we put a in onboard charger into the under seat compartment area. So under the seat, there's an onboard charger. And uh, that basically means I'm going to pull out a power cord and plug it into the wall when I want to charge it. I don't need an external charger at all. And that increases the usability and how practical this is by a lot. It's exponentially more practical now. Before, you had a 50, 60 mile range and you had better been home by that time. Now we can go 50, 60 miles, plug in, charge, and come back. Obviously, I can't carry a giant charger on my back, so the fact that the bike is carrying all the weight now, much better. So here's the inside of the Electrom, and this here was never there before. So this unit is the old DCP, and this is an onboard charger. So. Normally you have to have an external charger with the DCP, but this unit replaces everything and will go inside the bike. And right now we're testing to make sure that this thing actually works because of course we just picked it up off the floor as Alto's going out of business. So, but it seems like it's working. Hopefully this is the new location for our charging system, our onboard charger. Well, Mark is working on the fitment of that. I've already started <laughs> finally putting on the blue coloration for the Grom, which will then eventually become Galaxy graphics on top of the blue. So, yeah. Love the color. Love the color. More now that I see it on the bike. More now that I see it, for sure. We have the technology. <laughs> uh, no. You ever wonder how badass stuff like this is built? You're looking at it. <laughs> sometimes, sometimes. Nope. Sometimes it's like that. But we got all the blue plastics on. And now we got, this is kind of a mock-up. Sort of, kind of. That's going to be cleaner. But yeah, it's all tucked in there. Everything's wired up. And then look, you pull this out. We're not going to pull it out right now. But there's like five feet of cord in there. And then we just plug it into the wall. Boom! We have a ground. There we go. See? Now, we just all think... <laughs> See, it looks so clean on the outside. And that's all that matters. <laughs> 12 seconds later. Ooh, okay, so <clears throat> right now everything's working, but this thing is getting like, ow, it's, it's hot. So I don't, I don't know. We're gonna see how hot it's getting. Maybe build a heat sink? I don't know. Maybe it's normal? Hmm. Stay tuned. Basically, we made a heat sink. I mean, it's a little primitive, but big old block of aluminum, put some fins on it, bolted it on, and it drastically reduced the temps. We were at 200 F, and what, we didn't see over 120 F? So, huge, huge difference, so we're good to go. We got it tucked right there, it's gonna go underneath the seat, and then bam, I'm gonna have onboard charging, as you can see, plugged right into the wall. And the most exciting thing that we've done since I've been here is that we've played with the firmware. So if you don't know, if you wanna get more power out of an electric vehicle, you need to either increase the voltage or you need to increase the current. The only way you can do that 
is through software. So although nothing physically has changed with this bike, we've tweaked the firmware and hopefully that's gonna result in a little bit more juice. So that's why we're here. We're about to test it, so let's check it out. I'm not expecting much, but a little bit's a little bit. So let's see what we, let's see what we got here. I think that's a little bit. That's it's faster. I'm telling you, it's faster. let's do like a like a twenty roll or something. Hit it. distribution a little bit better, huh? Get that charger in the back. Couple of hard pulls will do that, won't ya? <laughs> so we need to figure out a way to cool this battery. This is a beta battery from early development. And that, see as you can see, it's back to normal now. But because of that, it's got not cooling issues, but it's not as efficient as some of the later models. So we need to figure out a way to make it more efficient cooling wise. juice just just a little bit more but three three poles and we thermal limited on the battery pack um like i was explaining earlier it's a beta pack so this pack from alta isn't nearly as efficient at dissipating heat as some of the later models not only that we've got it geared up and we're running it wide open so three hard pulls we're limiting i think that's something that we could work to improve in the future but all in all i think it's a little bit quicker. It's a little bit quicker, so I'm stoked. I'm stoked on the firmware upgrade and ultimately having that charger in the back, practicality went up, speed went up. We're, we're doing pretty good. We're doing pretty good this trip. So, as I was saying about the thermal limiting, it's not a constant problem. It's actually, really not a problem unless you're going wide open for long periods of time back to back then it becomes an issue you don't really hold the throttle wide open like that for that long because you know how many times are you trying to go over 80 miles per hour on a grom you're just not um it's something that I aim to improve, but it's not a huge issue. Especially when it doesn't happen under normal riding conditions. Even after hard riding conditions, it's not a problem. Only under extreme stress do we get thermal limiting. Um, we're gonna improve it, but not too worried about it. On our way back to the garage, we're gonna see what we can do about gearing. We're gonna try to gear this thing a little bit different and see how that's gonna affect the acceleration and the top speed.
So right now we're working on a new sprocket mount. This is our old one. Um, I'm not even gonna bother explaining it. There's a whole bunch of pieces missing right now, but basically we couldn't fit a smaller front sprocket because of the design. So now we're making a new one with an old Alta Pinion gear that fits perfectly on this spline, so a lot less custom work to be done. We're really just milling it down, making an adapter, which I'll show you when it's done. But that's gonna allow us to have a smaller rear sprocket as well and maintain the same gear ratio. So not only is it gonna be a better design, uh, a safer design, it's gonna also allow for a better gear ratio so I can actually turn left. Back in Northern California, I know it's probably a jump on camera. Uh, it was getting late and I had a super long drive, so I didn't film of much of the front sprocket process that I would have liked, but we did get it done. Here's like it almost done, um, but you're gonna have to wait until the next video to see exactly how that turned out and how that's gonna affect the situation that we got going on here. Definitely what that means is that this sprocket here is going to shrink. We're gonna get a smaller rear sprocket, so that means I'm gonna be able to turn. So that's all we got for this video. Please stay tuned for the next one if you wanna see the progress on this Grom. If you like this video, please smash that like button. If you wanna see more videos like this, if you're interested in electric motorcycles, vehicles, I got the Alta Redshift MXR, we do vlogs. If you wanna see the shenanigans we get into, please do subscribe. It really helps out the channel. And yeah, well, that's all I got. So as always, until next time, Electro out.